Hey there! Today I'm going to be showing you how to make these beautiful DIY watercolor canvas art with the help of your Cricut machine. I used no pen, no paper, no paint. Um, I created these only with the help of my Cricut machine. So it's a really cool project. I can't wait to share it with you. You can find my full supply list linked below in the video description. Additional tips and tricks on the print and cut process that we used here and all the supplies I used. So be sure to visit that blog post below in the video description for all of my supplies. So today we're going to make these really beautiful uh, watercolor canvases and this looks like an authentic watercolor when you're looking at it here finished and from a distance but it's actually made using heat transfer vinyl and um, a print and cut image that I uh, found online and I'm gonna link my resources for all of these materials and everything below in the video description um, I am I'm good at crafting but I'm not an artist at all when it comes to being able to like draw with paints and and pens and papers um, and I was thinking to myself one day I was like I bet there's a way I can make my own wrapped canvas art using the help of my Cricut, and there is. And um, this is just a really cool project. I had some watercolor um, heat transfer vinyl laying around. So you are going to need um, a few supplies for this project. I did use an easy press for this project. Um, that's optional. You can get away with using an iron if you don't have one of these yet. Um, you'll need a heat safe mat or surface. You're going to need a upholstery staple gun and you'll also need a staple remover you're going to need some canvas this is just a basic wrapped canvas that has staples on the back here with a wood frame we're going to pull those out in a minute and I'll tell you why and then you're going to need an image of your choice and we um, have loaded this into design space and I've print this out I've printed this out via design space um, so that it has that black registration mark around it that Cricut gives us and we're going to load it to our machine in just a minute and have it cut it out and then you're also going to want some heat transfer vinyl now I have this pretty watercolor heat transfer vinyl here um, but you can use of course any type of pattern or heat transfer vinyl you want you can use adhesive vinyl um, I did successfully use adhesive vinyl on a couple of these projects um, that I tried, but the one thing that you might want to do if you choose to use adhesive vinyl is just take a thin layer of Mod Podge and, and paint it over the, um, the canvas so that the adhesive and the Mod Podge really um, hold well together. Um, the heat transfer vinyl does work a little bit better because we're working with a cotton canvas here. Most canvases are cotton, so that's why the heat transfer vinyl works well. So I've chosen this watercolor sort of print one here. And this is optional to your preference based on what type of project you might be doing, what you might be putting on your canvas here. You're also going to need um, potentially some other type of adhesive vinyl as well, just standard vinyl. I'm using this sort of shimmery metallic um, vinyl here. Now, for the image that I have here, I have printed this out on printable vinyl. So Cricut sells printable vinyl. You can find some other just generic brands, I think on like Amazon and things. I'm going to link resources below the video, but you will need it to be a printable vinyl, vinyl or like a printable sticker paper. Basically, that's what the printable vinyl is. And that's going to allow us to lift this image and to add it on top of um, this canvas that we're going to do here. Okay, so those are the supplies you're going to need for this project. And we're going to start by loading this into our machine. And if you need more details on how to do a print and cut, I want you to follow the link that's below in the video description because I have a whole blog post on working with print and cut. If you're not familiar with getting that set up um, in Design Space, I can absolutely help you with that. Just visit the link in the video description. But we're going to go ahead and get started with loading this and cutting our image out. Okay, so when I go and place this image, this is fresh off of my printer, and I am just placing it right at that top left-hand corner, smooth it out, and if you're doing this, I would highly recommend, because this is an inkjet printer, you're going to have to use an inkjet printer, that's what Cricut works with. Give your image maybe five to ten minutes to like have the ink set up, because if you're smoothing it out like this, there's a potential that the ink could smear. So I would give it just a few minutes um, to do that. So I've got this all set here. And we're going to select printable vinyl inside of Cricut Design Space, and I'm going to load this in. 
Okay, so my cut is all finished. I'm taking this off of my Cricut now. I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna peel the mat away from the material just to help decrease the curling of the material there. I'll set my mat aside. And you can see that it did cut nicely there. It kind of did what they call is a kiss cut so that it didn't go all the way through the paper, but it went through the part that we're gonna be lifting. So don't mess with this yet. Just you have that part done, just set it aside for now, okay? The next part is gonna be to prep our canvas. So let me put this little guy right over here. So I have just a standard canvas, like I said here, and it's a cotton canvas, and I have um, these little staples that go around it. Most canvases are all made the same way. Um, I'm gonna link my resource for which one I used below. And I'm gonna need to remove these staples because we want to work with something that's flat. If we were to try and press our iron-on material onto this, from this side, it has nothing solid underneath it. So it's not gonna work, it, it won't adhere to it. So we need to remove this from the frame so we can get that on here and then we'll be able to um, go from there. That's just a staple remover. You could probably even use pliers for something like this. You're just gonna dig in and remove those staples. And it's just gonna take a couple seconds to go around and do that. So that's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove all these staples and then I will show you the next step sure you move all your staples to the trash or set them aside don't let them fall on the floor that could hurt your feet really badly been there done that okay so now you'll be able to just lift this right off like so just set the frame aside and you'll need your heat safe mat here let me go ahead and close this up since we're not going to use this and you're going to want to just lay out your canvas that has been removed from the frame right onto the mat there, okay? So the next part here is gonna be actually to put our heat transfer vinyl on, which is what I'm gonna grab right over here. So you, like I said, you can use any heat transfer vinyl ultimately. Um, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna flip this over and I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this. And you can use scissors. I like to use a straight cutter for my vinyl. Um, it kind of helps eliminate waste and keep the edges nice and neat. So I'm just gonna kind of gauge as to where I need to cut this down to. I'm gonna use the canvas as a bit of a guide here. It doesn't have to be like super perfect to the edge because this is gonna be a wrapped canvas. So um, like when you see the front of this here, everything is nice and crisp and clean. And when you see the back, it kind of just you know, fades into the background. So it doesn't have to be like perfect. You just want to get it kind of close to the edge there. Okay. So that looks pretty close to where I'm going to need it. Remove that. And the next step here is to flip our canvas back over to the top side that we originally were working with. And now we're going to sort of just get this lined up here. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can see I have some extra white sticking out. That's fine because it's gonna get wrapped around the canvas, so you're not even gonna be able to see it. All right, so I'm gonna get this set here. Make sure that your shiny side of your heat transfer vinyl is up. You don't want the shiny side down um, because then that's going to, of course, have the, the pattern on the wrong side. So make sure your shiny, the plastic side is up. And I have my easy press here, and this is set to 330, it's gonna heat back up here, set to 330 and 30 seconds. Yours might be a little different. Um, if you're using like a, a, an iron or something, you may need to just set it to like a medium temperature setting and start with that and then see how your material reacts to it. Um, but if you're using a Cricut Easy Press or something similar, I use the setting of 330 for 30 seconds. My easy press here is just reheating. It went off on the, automatically in its safe mode there. Again, I'm using a heat safe surface here. Um, this is just a, an easy press mat that you can get online. Again, all those resources will be below. And all we're gonna do here is we're gonna start in the center and we're gonna start pressing this down. right in the center. For this first press, you don't really want to scoot this around um, because it, it, this is the first time it's like 
adhering to the actual canvas. If you scoot it too much, it's probably gonna move it a little bit at first. You can do a little more scooting around once we um, actually get the initial part down, the initial like stick of it to the canvas. So I'm just pretty much letting this set here for that 30 seconds. And it might look a little like bubbly and weird and that's okay. Um, it's not gonna look like that when we actually raise it up here. So now I'm gonna move down here and I'm gonna do it again. And at this point, oops, wrong button. Um, at this point, you can basically just sort of use it like an iron and go back and forth because now it's not gonna scoot around on us. Our material won't move around on us because it's already kind of attached itself. Um, to the center of the canvas there. So I got that side. I'm gonna just flip this around. Very careful if you're moving this. It's hot. Now I'm just gonna use it like an iron for another 30 seconds to get the rest of this heat transfer vinyl adhered to my cotton canvas. Okay, so after you do this, your material is going to be really hot for a couple of minutes. So I recommend just sort of setting it aside and um, letting it just cool off because you're going to need to peel the plastic off. But if you try and do that right now, you're probably going to hurt your fingers. So just give it a minute. Don't turn your easy press off yet because if for any reason the plastic's not coming apart from it, then um, you may need to set the easy press back down. I'm pretty sure mine will come off just fine because I've done this a couple times already. Mine's almost cool to the touch, slightly warm. So you just wanna use, grab that clear plastic liner, it should sort of naturally be lifting away from your material. All right, so what we're gonna do next before we start adding anything else to this canvas, we wanna actually staple this back on because if we go and add things on it now, you're more than likely to probably get it on there crooked. Um, so it's, it's not good to try and do it when it's not onto the frame. So I'm gonna flip this over and it should be pretty effortless to see where it was folded originally and you can just place that frame right back in there. And then you're gonna staple this back on with the upholstery um, staples. Let's see, oh, yeah. Let's have that upside down there. So I usually do the sides parallel to each other first and then do the long sides. It really doesn't matter too much, but that's just how I do it. When you get to the sides here, you're just basically going to kind of fold it inwards like you would a package, like a Christmas package or something, and then fold this up just like that so it's nice and seamless it's not grating right there one side So that is now back on. You can see it looks just as good as before. Now it's nice and covered in that really pretty uh, watercolor heat transfer vinyl that I chose. And even the edges look nice here, so there's no white showing at all. Okay, so we're good to go on that. And now we're going to go ahead and add on our sticker part. So I peel this up. Um, I already test peeled this a second ago. Um, I use this like a sticker. I do not, um, I do not use transfer tape with this because this is printed with ink, and if you use um, transfer tape, it will likely peel the ink. Now, if you're using a more intricate design where you feel you need that transfer tape because it's impossible to lift it up manually, then I would recommend spraying your design, your printed design, with something like um, clear acrylic you know, adhesive um, to sort of like seal it and um, 
I think I said adhesive, I don't mean adhesive, I mean like a clear acrylic spray. Um, and that will sort of coat it enough to where if you do use a light transfer tape or uh, contact paper, then um, it should come up without any um, damage to the ink underneath or extremely minimal to where it almost looks natural to part of the watercolor abstract painting that we're doing here. Okay, so I'm just manually placing this here. It's a pretty simple design, so it doesn't take a lot of um, calculation to get this on. I like to place it kind of at the center point first and then smooth it out. Okay, smooth all your edges down so it looks like it's a part of the painting. Of course, you could stop right here if you wanted to. If you didn't want to add anything else, you could stop right here. And that would be an example of how you can make your own watercolor canvas. I like to, at this point, flip this over and I just press from the inside here, or it's a bit more solid, to make sure that that's stuck on really well. So there is how I get my own watercolor artwork with the help of my Cricut Maker Machine. And I am gonna add some words. Um, I have a Corgi, his name is Shorty, and I have a recently a new addition to my family. Her name is Macy, and she's a golden retriever. Um, she's still a puppy, um, but I'm gonna add a little phrase to this one as well, and this is gonna be um, for a little doggy area we're making in our home. So I cut out this one says, stay, go stay golden, and this one says, hey, gorgeous. It's just a little play on words. Um, so I'm just gonna use a little bit of transfer tape to transfer this over. Now, like I said, um, you are gonna be sort of hitting some of this ink, so I'm gonna show you sort of how I minimize any effect to this. First off, I'm using a light transfer tape here. I'm not using a strong grip don't use anything like that you will probably end up ruining the painting or the uh, principle underneath so I can make transfer tape there and I'm gonna just weed this out really quickly now before I um, lift this up I'm gonna take a pair of scissors and I'm gonna cut away any extra area that is not a part of the wording here the reason I'm doing this is because it's going to minimize any extra of that sticky transfer tape getting on other parts of my image where it could potentially peel away ink from my inkjet printer. So this is just sort of a little extra precaution here. So I have my words now. And I'm going to place this right here at the bottom. And when I place this on, I'm really going to use just my finger just to sort of draw my finger over those letters. And if you're very careful about it, you shouldn't have any issues with ink coming off. And now I'm going to start lifting this up, go very slow, and you want to go at a very steep angle as you're pulling. That really helps things not lift. There we go. Press that down just a little bit more. There is our super cute watercolor art that we made ourselves. And we did it with the help of our Cricut Maker. And I'm not an artist at all, but I think these turned out really cute. Um, you can find beautiful watercolor illustrations on stock photo sites. Um, you know, clip art that's done by other artists that you can print for your personal use on 
you know, your, your printer and then cut out on your Cricut Maker machine or your Cricut Explorer machine. And you can make these fabulous items for your home or gifts for dog lovers. And I just absolutely adore this project. Um, I haven't seen anything out there like this before. Um, so I hope you guys liked it too. And I hope it gives you lots of new inspiration for some new crafts and projects that you can do with your Cricut machine. And I'll see you guys next time.